when you talk about vehicle electronics today, you're probably thinking of the dozens of ECUs, miles of wiring and more packed into modern vehicles. But somewhere under here, there is still the basics, your alternator and your starter motor. Vehicle electronics doesn't have to be the tricky subject that many people think it is today. And beginning with the basics is a key place to start, especially when it comes to diagnostics. So we, we start, started off with the, the basic alternator. And over the years, we've, we've actually improved, improved it, went to stage three, now to SC. Now, what the SC alternator did was rather than have um, circular copper wire, we went to angular. Um, now, the angular, uh, angular wire reduced coil resistance, but also get, gave us a, a more compact uh, solid state winding. That led to the alternator reducing in size and reducing in weight by 20%. So this is not only did it raise the output, it was also less load on the engine to actually drive the alternator. In other words, emissions were taken into account as well as output. Again, the control of the alternator was then reduced into one single microprocessor rather than that complex, um, well, collection of diodes and the like on the back. So a single microprocessor, again, reducing weight. So the winding density um, was raised from 45 to 75%. Now, the result of that was 20% lighter and an increase of 50%. So that is the current alternator. Of course, when it comes to repairing the basics in vehicle electronics, replacing new for new is one option but taking a reman product that can usually improve the original is a great idea as well. And it also gives a bit more in-depth knowledge of some of those electronic systems. In terms of garages, the main part of reman, there's two, there's two aspects of this, I would say, probably, to be honest, is quality is huge, and the other part is availability. So a, car, a customer brings a car to, to a garage and the repairer needs to change the alternator or the starter, it's no use to that repairer if there's a, a back order on, on the part because it's coming from the far east. That is no use to anybody because that car has sat on that ramp, taking up time uh, and space, sorry, that the garage could otherwise use more efficiently. With a reman, because we rely on a surcharge product and, and the core for it, if there is ever a, a one-off opportunity or, or, or there's a slight delay, we'll have an old call that we can just remanufacture within that sort of day. We can just push that through the production line as a high priority order. And it will it, it will probably get done in that same day. And it could leave us that evening and the customer could have it the following day. Actually, the other aspect of that is quality. You know, we we have total oversight over the components that we use in our remanufacturing process, the engineering and the workmanship that goes into the products and the testing at the end of it. You know, we have every opportunity to ensure the quality of the products. Whereas if we were just buying from a factory in the Far East, you know, we have nothing, no oversight at all. We don't know what components went into it. We don't know what the workmanship was like, what the um, testing they used at the end of it was. And uh, so just to go on with this a little bit more, um, with the product getting increasingly technical as we move towards 48 volt mild hybrid applications, quality is huge because the, the parts are becoming more expensive and the labour to fit them is becoming more expensive. We don't want to be doing the job twice. Um, and when customers do have to do a job twice, they become very unforgiving. And so in order to avoid that situation entirely, we just ensure the quality of the product right at the start. Now, of course, as I'm driving a modern car, I am surrounded by electronic gizmos. I've got my infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay. I've got my auto start stop. I've got my air conditioning. I've got ADAS all integrated into the vehicle. I've got a digital dashboard, although not quite as advanced as some of the more modern cars. I've also got dozens of ECUs controlling different vehicle systems. I put my foot on the accelerator and rather than the cable connecting to the engine, it's actually an ECU detecting the amount of pressure I'm putting through the pedal. So vehicle electronics really, really has grown over the last few years as cars have become more technologically advanced. But what does that mean for technicians when these modern vehicles come into the workshop? Vehicle electronics have changed over the last few years. You know, we've come from a nice, simple 12-volt system with a live and an earth. 
we've moved on, you know, we've shifted from hardware centric to software defined vehicles nowadays. You know, vehicles relied heavily on mechanical components with isolated electronic control units, you know, multiple ECUs are on the vehicle. That's changed again over the last few years. So now we're looking more software driven. So we've got centralized computing platforms controlling many of the functions. You know, you've got over the air calibrations happening on vehicles. You know, the software's controlling everything from powertrain performance to your ADAS systems and even your entertainment systems nowadays. So with mechanics, we do need to be conscious of what we're working with. You know, as I said, we shift from mechanical to digital diagnosis. So before, you know, in reference it as the old days, previously a technician would inspect mechanical parts. You know, we get a multimeter, we'd scan basic fault codes and we'd try and find a fault. Nowadays, we need to be into a more advanced diagnostic tools. You know, we're going further, we're going deeper. You know, we need specific software to interface with many car systems nowadays. You know, ultimately, you know, the technicians have a have a need to understand how all of these systems are talking to each other. You know, we've moved on from Canvas. You know, a lot of technicians will still class Canvas as modern technology. You know, and that's getting phased out. There's still different variations of it, but we're looking at different protocols, you know, LIN, FlexRay, Ethernet. We've also got software logs and updates, firmware versions, which need looking at and different compatibilities. You know, so the, the role of the technician has changed. You know, we've, you know, we need a basic programming logic and software behavior. It's becoming a required skill now for a modern technician. One new piece of technology that is sure to put pressure on the basics is the introduction of start-stop systems. But how have these affected the starter motor and what do technicians need to know? Originally when starter motors were, de were designed, it was a one-to-one -one drive. Whatever speed the armature went at, the pinion did. But as, as the needs have changed, we've gone to planetary gears. So for example, the sun gear will be on the armature then you have your planet gears and then the the annulus is actually connected to the pinion. So you've got your high speed at the armature, but a re reduced speed but higher torque at the pinion. So what we've done is, is adjusted the design as the needs have arisen. And again, with start stop, if you look at the size of a, a solenoid on a start stop uh, starter, it's much larger than standard because it does two or three times, four times the work. So are modern cars more complex when it comes to vehicle electronics? And what should be understood when it comes to working on them? Well, I always say is a modern car is more complex than we actually are. We, we seem to build that image up ourselves. You know, with a dashboard full of warning lights, dozens of fault codes, it's tempting to jump straight to an ECU fault or a software bug or communication errors. You know, but often dialing it back, looking back at the basics, you know, we see a lot of issues that come through a high tech issue actually has a low tech cause, you know, a weak battery, you know, anything JLR, for example, you know, if you've got a weak battery, it knocks off so many different systems. You could easily go down a rabbit hole and get lost, you know, a corroded ground, for example, you know, we've all experienced as a technician corroded grounds, the influence that has nowadays, you know, and other bits of wiring. So we still need to keep the basics in mind and make sure we do our fundamental tests before we start getting really involved. The underlying basic electronics is important just for diagnosis purposes. So the, the parts where we are right now in 2025 are already quite complicated. And of course, we're aftermarket, so we're a few years behind where we are right now anyway. But over the next 10 years, for example, the car parts are only going to get more and more complex as hybrid technology becomes more and more evolved. And so having a good understanding of vehicle electronics and wiring and rotating how we're rotating electric works is going to be key because the vehicles are more and more integrated with software more and more integrated with other components in the same system you know if if, it's, if your customer is just going to say well it's the alternator every time without doing further investigation of recognizing underlying vehicle issues it's going to be really really uh, messy for them going forward you've got to you've got to really have a good grip on vehicle specific systems and how the problems that can arise if it's not done correctly. So yes, vehicle electronics could be a tricky subject. It doesn't need to be. Most vehicles, disregarding electric vehicles, will still consider the basics. Start there. If the problem persists, then you can look through the multitude of wiring and use your diagnostic expertise. Or 
if the problem is more software or system related, stay up to date with training. That's especially important with more and more ADAS and comfort systems being introduced by car makers and regulators alike. Make sure you're up to date and vehicle electronics doesn't need to be difficult.